I totally believe that creativity is an addiction, and I live my life that way. I treat it like it is and not like it isn't, and that means that I listen to a lot of what is moving through me at all times because when you need creativity most and it doesn't want to show up, I'm going to find out why. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut, because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. I am a poet that happens to write in a forest. I go there to listen. What started at the Billy Graham Library right here in Charlotte, North Carolina, has evolved into a lifelong journey. Something was moving through me. I heard a calling. These aren't my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest. Chapter number 284, October 16, 2021. Breathing in the atmosphere of this little forest right here in South Charlotte, North Carolina, a cool fall breeze invites the leaves to dance during the rising of yet another sun. In all my years connected to this collection of trees... I've never truly taken note of the angle of the sun's rays so early. I mean, I've witnessed a lot of new beginnings, but as of late, and it could be an act of new growth, the sun catching newer shapes and shades. I realize the sun moves. That, that's not the issue here. It's how the soul is taking what it sees and realizing different things. Tree growth. The limbs are longer. The leaves are still vibrant with green. But that sun puts on a daily morning show that's bringing out the images we can't see in front of the painting. It's the universe saying, I see through you, and I see the other side, and it's just as beautiful. As humans, how often do we judge what we can't see? We agree with our creative spirits to assume, and if the picture doesn't feel right, the next step is to bring change to the things that we can't see. Yet this morning, the sun rising says, all is beautiful. The writer on that particular day, October 16th, 2021, really brought up something that really kind of filled my heart at this time, which happens to be March 1st, 2022. We like to change what we can't see. I'm currently looking out into this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't see leaves because fall and winter have set in, but I do see the green from the white pines and the Lelands. I see a lot in this forest, a lot of movement, but I don't see what's behind me. How often do you turn around to see what's behind you? We all watch scary movies, you know, like Halloween and Friday the 13th, and we all shout at the screen saying, turn around, turn around. But how often do you turn around in your daily life? I'm one of those people who's addicted to looking in the rearview mirror while I'm driving in the car. And the reason why is because if I'm going to get hit in the backside of the car, I want to know and I want to see the eyes of that person that took their eyes off the road. But see, that takes my eyes off from where I'm going. Now, we had an incident last night. Very, 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 very close incident. We were driving through our forest and the deer are very active right now. They're they're horny. They, they, They want to have some action. And what happened is on the road, they ran in front of me. I came within inches of hitting one of the deer. That would break my soul. 29 years in this forest and and you know once again this is the reason why I drive as slow as I do you don't know where nature's going to come out and reach toward you so did I turn and look to see what happened to the deer at that time no I didn't and the reason why is because through trust and faith I was able to keep moving forward but for a moment there I did look behind my 29 years in this forest and wonder what if I had hit that deer you got to pay attention to what's moving behind you, especially during these days of invasions and pandemics, because they always say don't live in your past. It's not living in your past to turn around and see what's behind you. What you've got to do is take note of what's in front of you because it's changing. But so is everything behind you. And you've got to understand where your shadow is planting its feet versus where you just were. But the question is, how do we do something like this? We, we can't always be looking over our shoulder. We look like nervous Nellies at that point in time. It's not about looking over your shoulder. It's just knowing what your true surroundings are. Now, I'm going to turn around and then I'm going to tell you what's behind me. There's nothing dangerous. There's something back there that I don't talk about a lot. Every one of my martial arts belts are behind me. Every one of them from white belt all the way up to third dawn, which is a third degree. Now, over here to my left, my brother's ashes and my mother's ashes and all the ashes of all of the puppies that we have rescued from puppy mills and all these different places where you need to rescue dogs. In front of me, the forest. To my right, I've got 
paintings that I did back in the early part of the 1990s that I didn't put in galleries because I was in love with them so much. Taking a look at your surroundings grounds you in your presence of now. Because I deal with that daily. People go, I don't know what to do with how do I get into this thing called now? You get into it by knowing where you are. Every one of these trees are constantly circled by energy. Everything in this tree, if you look at the rings, is a circle. How often do you give love and life to the circles inside of you? I'm Errol. These are not my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest.